This hair is hilarious. Two Coke product placements in one shot. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's three, but I can't 100% ID that empty bottle next to Tony Shalhoub, so the official count has to stand at two, which is still too, too many per shot. Also, this is a shitty ass green room. These are the stars of a show supposedly as popular as Star Trek, and the conventions would be just as popular. And they literally have them in a storage room with some mirrors. The guest stripper at your local Deja Vu has a nicer green room than this. How did I come to this? The bigger question is why does everyone have to wear the show's costumes? And why does Alexander have to be in full makeup? I've been to Star Trek conventions, which is probably a sin for me. But my point is, when Michael Dorn comes out to speak, he's just Michael Dorn in a sweater and jeans. He's not f***ing dressed up as Worf. I mean, my TV Guide interview was six paragraphs about my boobs and how they fit into my suit. Look, I have no doubt TV Guide focused on her boobs for the interview, but there ain't no goddamn way they spent six paragraphs on it. TV Guide is the definition of editing, trimming, and snippets. It's the Reader's Digest for TV lovers. They could interview Dolly Parton and they wouldn't spend six f***ing paragraphs on her boobs. Exaggeration called and it wants you to reread the definition of exaggeration. They really do love him. Yeah, almost as much as he loves himself. The fans here at your table can hear everything you were saying. No. The commander and I never had a thing. And this question was conveniently asked when the commander just happened to be wandering by, so I will be more than happy to conveniently sin it. Because Sins and I, we do have a thing. We need your help. Is this about the gig tomorrow? Why would Jason think this had anything to do with the gig? Do people that have hired him often show up out of the blue at another appearance and hound him with concerns about their planet's well-being? He has no idea he's a laughingstock. This is terrific timing for him to be in this stall, and no one knows he's there, and the dickheads come in bashing him. But also, this cannot be the first time he's heard of people thinking he's a joke. It's played as a devastating piece of news, but this is a guy that would read every article about him, newspaper or tabloid, and nothing like this would surprise him. It's actually a pretty important plot point in the film that he's so upset by this, so I'm sending it twice. But also, there's no way the fictional Star Trek convention would have the fictional William Shatner using the same bathrooms as the convention attendees. This dude has his own private bathroom and his convention rider, and you know it. These people all in line here, they surely already paid for the autographs, so him storming off creates a refund headache for the guy running this convention. This movie has never conventioned before. Let's pour one out for Suncoast, the Spencer's gifts of movie stores. The sin is for how expensive that was. I get living in the Hollywood Hills for the prestige, the view, and the panache, but I do not get living in an all-glass house where anyone with a decent telescope can see whatever you do. Watching yourself on television. Maybe I should get some pants on. And maybe never answer the door with no pants on. Sir. I am Lank, Senior Requisition Officer. Discount rain with holy sh**! Coca-Cola, do you have one of those? This movie is so far up Coke's ass, it could kiss itself with Coke's lips. Would you like to don your uniform? No, you know what, I'd like to skip that. But considering Jason is assuming this is the gig he agreed to and is being paid for, why is he being so dickish to Mathazar and company? I get that he's supposed to be a bit of an asshole, but based on what we've seen so far, he seems, for the most part, professional. I get this gig in Van Nuys in about a quarter of an hour. You literally cannot drive anywhere in LA in 15 minutes. They bring a new commander. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's f***ing Stan Winston, you twit. Oh, what if Sarah survived? And he does, which brings up this question. Why isn't he returning fire currently? Or at the very least, issuing some threats that would have come to Jason's attention. To have saved the people. Premature celebration. This is an awesome scene where he sees space and realizes this has all been real. Why does the return him home transporter platform have to raise him up to the exterior of the ship's hull? In a few minutes, they will transport the entire cast of the old show to this ship, and they'll appear inside the ship, not on the hull. So this is all so he can realize it's real, and I feel like there are better ways to do that. Look, I don't know the exact distance between the ship's orbit and Jason's home, but we can't even see Earth when he leaves the ship. So f***ing really far seems like a safe estimate. No matter what kind of engine this human condom thing around Jason has on it, I'm not buying he could get back to his house and then over to the electronics store before the rest of the team was done with their appearance. He even said before his encounter with Sarah that the other gig was in 15 minutes. Not to mention I'm guessing he would need a week of intense therapy and drugs to even begin to process what happened to him. But he's just ready for another mission right away. And yes, I understand this movie isn't bothering itself with details like time travel and traumatic stress disorders, but if you don't think I'm sinning this, then that's on you. This is one of the strangest movie sets of all time. This is clearly a factory, but they've decided to present it as an electronic store in a mall? Opening directly next to a thin strip of underground parking next to a huge open parking lot? I cannot for the life of me figure out why they couldn't find a location that looked like an electronic store to film this. Like, say, a real electronic store. They get mad at Tim Allen for not being there, but they clearly had a script ready to go that both mentioned this specific tech superstore and did not contain any lines for Tim Allen's character. These kids literally bump into him in the parking lot of the tech superstore opening? What are these Galaxy Quest fan kids doing here right now? Was there a news release about the Quest actors being at the grand opening? And if so, why are super fan nerds like this showing up late to it? 
Also, is Jason really not going to check if he has the correct communicator? That would seem pretty important to his immediate plans to convince the rest of the cast of his adventures this morning. Why the f*** is Guy even here? He was the MC at the convention thing yesterday. Today, the cast has a tech store grand opening, which Guy would not have been invited to. Is he stalking the cast like the kids are? She requested five pods, but for some reason Tech Sergeant Chen's pod doesn't appear under him because he's using the microwave? Anyway, he shows up later than everyone because reasons. How do you get greet the humans duty and forget your f***ing appearance generators? You had one job! We have modeled every aspect of our society from your example and it has saved us. Has it? Your whole planet is destroyed and your species is on the brink of extinction. Do you check the facts much, mate? Somehow this scene of them seeing the starship is every bit as thrilling as any Star Trek movie scene of seeing a new starship. This movie has the perfect balance of adoration and mockery. The main barracks. Jesus, that's a large room. Wouldn't it be easier to build multiple barracks than one room that is the length of Rhode Island? They designed those controls after watching you. This is honestly the most ridiculous thing in the entire film. Dude was a child when he was on the show. His movements were certainly spontaneous, erratic, and not repeatable. But somehow this alien civilization designed all the controls around that child-like behavior? F*** off. <laughs> Jesus. You might think I'd send the ticks, or the species-based food preparations. Instead, I'm sending the fact that our own modern society still doesn't yet have food replicators. I'm also sending the fact that this dude's makeup job has lasted this long. I know it falls apart later, but it should have fallen apart sooner. And that's a testament to a good makeup job. And I hate good makeup job. Wait. You heard about the device. The Omega-13. What is it? What does it do? We don't know. Not to harp on this too much, but if no one actually knows what it's supposed to do, how could Mathazar and company have not only built the Omega-13, but given it the power source to actually achieve its goal? I am sorry, you deserve to be shown. They do, but maybe not at mealtime, no. Also, I have it queued up and ready to play right now, even though I had no intention of bringing this up in the mess hall, and I haven't told anyone to actually play it. It's a magical tape! This leads to a funny scene, but it bothers me a great deal. The gesture in question is not commonly used to denote we're dead, as she later says she understood it to mean. It's pretty universally a kill the signal gesture. I'm going as fast as I can, Jason! How exactly would Tommy know he's going as fast as he can? They're not even calling down to Chen to see if he's giving it all he's got. Also, does Mathazar not find it on? They're calling each other by their real names, and not the names from the historical documents. They may not understand lying, but they're also a very intelligent species. I'm having a hard time buying he wouldn't at least question this. Press turbo! I've always said press the turbo, right? Falling ass backwards into success. The Protector survives this, and if you want to have the ship hit a lot of mines, fine, but not all the a lot of mines. Tommy broke his arm and there were explosions everywhere, and surely some Thermians died during that battle, no? I mean... Surely you don't think that Gilligan's Island is a... Those poor people. So they have watched every goddamn television show that has ever aired, and if that's so, then how have they not been confused when the same person shows up in multiple historical documents as different characters? Do they think that after Arthur Carlson left his job at WKRP in Cincinnati, he moved to New York, changed his name to Mr. Horton, and had Dudley and Arnold over to watch animated porn with him? Oh, brother. You know, there's a famous moment later in the movie when a character says one word, but the audio is another word completely. But here, Alexander says, oh, brother, without even moving his lips. And no one ever talks about that. Hey, Commander, listen. We Can you broadcast from engineering into the ready room without being announced or a phone ringing or something? He just starts talking. What if they were in the middle of an argument? So they reconfigure the solar matrix for endothermic propulsion, and they have traveled to a new planet for more beryllium. But what I want to know is, why is Ceres just waiting on the other side of a minefield? Space is f***ing big, man. Go around that that minefield cannot be infinite. I changed my mind, I want to go back. After the fuss you made about getting left behind. What fuss? Oh, you mean whatever deleted scene you shot and left on the cutting room floor where he made a fuss about not wanting to be left behind for this mission? Because we never saw that Nobody knows! Do you know why? Because my character isn't important enough for a last name. Because I'm gonna die five minutes in. Since when does not having a last name determine whether or not you will die in a movie? What about Gilligan? Newman? Quincy? Penny? Castiel? F***ing Spock! It looks cool, but why does this shuttle have to spin in circles while landing? It's an alien planet! Is there air? You don't know! Guy would be galactic at CinemaSense. <laughs> Seems okay. I would give all the sins back if here in a few minutes they all collapse and started choking, because there's no way just a couple breaths can tell you the air is fine for humans. The rest of this planet must be pretty f***ing green if there's breathable air on this bitch. Photosynthesis isn't a joke. Penis rock. You know, with all that makeup and stuff, I actually thought you were smart for a second. I'm continuing to wonder how long that makeup can even hold up for Alexander, especially in this blazing sun they are currently walking under. At the very least, it wouldn't still look this pristine. Even in the best conditions, that would need to have touch-ups throughout the day. Any kind of signal. 
Okay, I'll do my hands like this. Call! Cool, Call! Cool. What are you, an infant? Look, we have these. Then why did Jason ask Tommy to give a signal? Why didn't he just say, holler at us on the comms? Fred has been carrying this greasy paper sack since they got off the shuttle and now it's in his mouth and no one ever mentions it. The aliens show up before they roll the sphere more than 10 feet, but somehow they do a flea flicker end around Statue of Liberty play to still evade the little minor miners. Alright, Lysandra and Jason argue here for no reason instead of both getting into the shuttle, leaving Jason on the planet to face the minor miners. The digital conveyor? Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna be diced into cubes and set up there in a million pieces? Why don't they use the transportation pods they have used both times they brought him to the protector from Earth? This movie invents an entirely separate transporter system in a crucial moment because it needs tension, and that's cheating. Just do the gooey tube again. It was built to accommodate your hmm, anatomy, not ours. Okay, ass face, this is bullshit. The historical documents you watched to build this ship and your way of life definitely never gave you the full scope of human anatomy. But also, and much more importantly, you built this ship for Thermians. You based it on the humans in the show, but you are all Thermians. The digital conveyor built to accommodate human anatomy would be useless to Thermians. It was designed watching his motions from the historical documents. Here's another huge leap, because whatever Fred was doing as an actor to control this device on the show was clearly made up and different every time, and his ass definitely doesn't remember what he did. And he doesn't even get a chance to practice like Tommy does later. Never missed the bar! <laughs> Jason survives this. Fred zips up his uniform confidently while Gwen behind him has not zipped up her uniform for any reason since arriving here. And I know she was forced to show cleavage on the show, and therefore at the conventions, but now that she's in space around mostly Thermian aliens, she doesn't need to keep doing it, does she? And if she wants to, that's different. I should just delete this sin and avoid the controversy of just cause. But you get my point. Mathazar! Quaylek! Ted, why can't we reach them? So when they replicated everything from the Galaxy Quest TV series, did they not replicate any ship alarms? Shouldn't everyone already be aware that Ceres and his crew boarded? Prepare a tear harness for the female. How would Ceres know Gwen is a female? When would Ceres have had the opportunity to study human anatomy? You have all done far greater damage than I ever could have. They have not. Mathazar, the... there's no such person as Captain Taggart. My name is Jason Nesmith. I am a actor. Which is a name Mathazar would know as well, because it's listed in the opening credits of the historical documents he's watched countless times. It's more surprising Mathazar didn't ask Jason why he had two names. Explain as you would a child. Thing I said to my college girlfriend after her three more subtle breakup speeches had failed to help me understand what was happening. God, I am so sorry. Movie acts like Jason should be sorry that the Thermians base their society on the Galaxy Quest lie, when all he really needs to be sorry about is not stating that truth once he first came on board. The misunderstanding in society building is all on the dumbass Thermians, obviously. Core implosion estimated in nine minutes. This will take longer than nine minutes. Where's the happy ending, Jason? If you get back to Van Nuys, you could probably find one pretty easy. If you happen to venture into Madame Susie's, I recommend Tina. She has six fingers on one hand. Feels weird at first, but then, wait, what are we talking about? You're starting to act like you did in episode 17. You seen stealing hack. Alexander actually gets this reference, and it's amazing that all these actors remember every single detail from every episode back in the early 80s. I can't even remember if we've seen the Thomas Crown Affair, but you do you, super memory actors. Sorry, the door's a little sticky. Did you see that? I'll get one of my boys up here with a can of WD-40. Seems like an odd time to make jokes and small talk. You know, in less than nine minutes, the ship's going to explode. I'm pretty sure you don't know how to shut down a neutron reactor either. No, I don't. But I know someone who does. I quite enjoy this part of the movie and the inclusion of Justin Long and his conventioning pals, but this is still 20 minutes worth of this works. Hello? Got him. But how would Jason have heard that hello? Brandon wasn't pressing the button on his Vox. You know, I'm gonna get Kyle. He knows the utility tunnel system better than anybody alive. Super convenient that all these Galaxy Quest geeks are online at the same time, all have a solid connection, and none have decided to attend day two of the convention the entire movie ends with. Which is a long way of saying, bull****. How many shots like this would even be in the show? Who would want to watch this? The odds of this dead body hitting the main windshield on Ceres' ship? 32 million to one. Uh, there will be a slight drop. <laughs> this movie definitely saw sneakers. They're dying. How are they not already dead? Myself and others are convinced that what it is is a matter rearranger, affecting a 13 second time jump to the past. And while they have no realistic way to come to this conclusion, they are 100% right. And because Jason randomly chose to ask Brandon the question, he will be able to save everyone worth saving at the end of the movie. Got it? Good. Well, screw that! 
do we dub this? Most hilarious ADR ever? Worst ADR ever? Most studio bows to NBA bullshit ever? I feel like all those work. That snakehead alien is really giving me some Lonely Among Us vibes. And if you're going to remind me of that bullshit, I'm going to remind you I can sin. They survived the chompers, and that's worth 10 cents. Guy has his shirt unzipped lower than any female in this movie. <laughs> that is desperation in clothing form. Let it go, let it go, can't hold the back anymore. He has saved us! Commander Tiger has saved us! I realize this movie wants to needle Alexander all it can, and this is hilarious, but these Thermians are simple enough they would give credit here to Alex, not Jason. This is just screenwriting for laughs. This Thermian's death is really t This guy is still f***ing with his gun over two minutes later. Can you get us closer to these mines? Closer! I'm more curious how Tommy can steer clear of the mines while looking at Jason instead of the view screen. How adorable! The actors are going to play war with me. As good a time as any to mention that this movie is the Three Amigos or A Bug's Life, but in space. And what you fail to realize is my ship is dragging mines. This is a really cool bit of spaceship chess, but why did the mines go for Ceres' ship instead of following the ship they were originally magnetized to? Yes! 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 For the second time in this film, premature celebration. God, Star Trek basically invented premature celebration. We know that these aren't deaths that will last. Somehow this will get reversed, so there's zero tension in this sequence of events. First, there is no way this is 13 seconds. Ceres was shooting at the crew one minute ago. Second, even if this is when it would send Jason back in time, how does the device know who to send back in time? Why is who presses the button any more relevant than any of the other people within the Omega 13's radius? This is just like Star Trek IV when the 80s scientist lady came back into the future with Kurt. Only grosser, because here the lady is an alien octopus with drippy legs. Everyone on the ship survives this, and no one in the convention center they crash into is killed. And that's some f***ing bullshit. Even if I don't sin that they crash into a convention center they're supposed to be attending, I can't get past the fact that all the cast comes out in the exact order they would be announced at the con. Half the f***ing building has been destroyed here, and these fans still think this is all part of the planned convention show. <laughs> f*** you. You've been an ass to her for many years prior to this, and you almost got her and some of her friends murdered by warlord aliens, but yeah, why wouldn't she want to f*** you? The 9000 series is the most reliable computer ever made. You are the first people to see The Lost Galaxy Quest, episode 92, two-parter, since it was originally aired in 1982. That doesn't make sense. As long as there's injustice, wherever there is suffering, we'll be there. I've lost a shoe. You've seen it anywhere. No, Jason, that's a wrap. There's nothing to think about. I'm not even supposed to be here today. Thrust ahead. Full. Fire at will. Relax. Can you see that? Do you know the Klingon proverb that tells us revenge is a dish that is best served cold? It is very cold in space. <laughs>